Hello friends and welcome back to Virtual Happy Hour. I am so excited to be kicking off my Fresh From The Garden cocktail series and I'm starting it off with my friends from Georgian Bay Spirit Co. to introduce you to their brand new spirit, Georgian Bay Whiskey. So the Ontario distiller that brought us the award-winning vodka and gin and our favorite ready-to-drink craft cocktails in a can have now introduced this fantastic barrel-aged Canadian whiskey. Super excited, super excited to introduce this to you, but it's summer and I thought, you know what, summer to me, that is not a time when I'm reaching for stiff and stirred cocktails like a Manhattan or an old fashioned. I want something long, I want something refreshing, I want something that's gonna help me beat the heat when I'm sweating from places I didn't know that I had. So we are doing an original cocktail of mine that is in my new ebook, which you can get on my online shop. It is free. This is the first entry and hopefully it has a bunch of other original cocktails and the dates when we'll make them together on virtual happy hour. So basically the next few Fridays we'll be doing some original cocktails from the book. So get ahead of the game, you know, same thing as with the Let's Get Blitz and cocktail advent calendar. All the syrup recipes are there. You can plan ahead, get organized, so you can fully participate. There's a very cool uh, beet infused martini coming up. But let's get started with the steep on it, as I'm calling it. We're gonna need a shaker, a highball glass, ideally a bar spoon. We're gonna do a little lemon twist as part of our garnish and some dried lavender. Other ingredients aside from our Georgian Bay whiskey, which has great notes of vanilla, which is from the new barrel char, uh, caramel or butterscotch, a little kind of light hint of orange in there as well. And then I'm using chamomile with lavender tea. So I got this in the organic aisle, just wanted to show you what that looks like because I really wanna play into the floral aspect and celebrate the herbs, the vegetables, the flowers that we have in abundance at this time of year and give you something to do with uh, all of your balcony harvest or your backyard harvest. And then here I have some honey lavender syrup, so equal parts honey and water and then uh, so a cup of each and then two tablespoons of dried culinary lavender. Important to get culinary lavender because while all varieties of lavender are edible, they don't all taste delicious. <laughs> so best to get the dried culinary lavender uh, and put that to work in this particular cocktail. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna do two ounces of our Georgian Bay whiskey. I love the square shape of the bottle. As you can see, really nice chestnut brown color. And this is gonna lend a fantastic foundation to this easy drinking summer cocktail. So it's sort of like a whiskey highball meets a boozy iced tea. So that's two ounces into our shaker. Then we're gonna do two ounces of our chilled chamomile lavender tea. You can pick it up at the LCBO. It retails for $34.95. So really approachable price point without compromising on flavor. And then we are going to do half an ounce of our honey lavender syrup. Thank you to everyone who's already downloaded the ebook from my online store. It's a shop.tasteandtipple.ca. It is again free, but if you'd like, if you feel so inclined, you're welcome to leave a tip at checkout. And we're just gonna do a, a scant, a scant quarter ounce of freshly squeezed lemon because I didn't want the citrus to overwhelm the subtle floral characteristics and I still wanted the whiskey to be able to shine as well. So quarter ounce, my soda water is in the fridge. Best to keep your soda water in the fridge if you want the carbonation, the bubbles to stick around a bit longer, especially for something that's a slow sipper. Now we're gonna add ice. We're gonna give this baby a little shaky, shaky, shaky. I've got my highball glass here. I have these really cool, I can get it out of here. Very cool cylindrical ice cubes that are intended for highball glasses. If I can get it in there, just maybe let that melt a second. I know it will cooperate eventually. Great. We 
We don't need to, you know, shake too long with this because we are adding soda water. So let's carefully if we can. Yes, perfect. Very nice. Give that a second. We don't want too much soda water. Probably an ounce to two ounces. So if you don't have this fancy ice cube, just make sure you fill your highball kind of right to the top with ice cubes. I'm gonna grab my soda water. Quality of your soda water, it does matter. I'm using Fever Tree. I'm gonna show you a kind of cool technique. It's been a while since we've had a technique teachable moment. So if you'll indulge me, my friends, I am gonna slide, oh, I should have put the bar spoon in here first. Now we're in a bit of a pickle. Hmm. We'll just like give this a little stir and see if I can work this down a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go with that awkwardly. So if you pour your soda water down the shaft of a spiral bar spoon, that is gonna help prevent it from frizzing so that you keep the carbonation in the cocktail a little bit longer. So let's see if I can do this without getting it everywhere. Very nice, there we go. So just a splish splash. And I did a little bit of research on bar spoons today because I was interested. So as you can see, this has a spiral shaft, the classic bar spoon bowl at the bottom, and then a two pronged uh, fork at the top. And this style of spoon was first popularized as what's called a sucket spoon, S-U-C-K-E-T. I'm gonna garnish with a bit of dried lavender in Germany. And sucket is a type of fruit dessert in syrup. And so it was basically a spork. So one side was a spoon, the other side was a fork. This ice cube was bigger than I'd anticipated. Now we're gonna do our lemon twist. So I'm gonna get a nice swath of this lemon and do the usual thing of cleaning up the sides. So this is just one style of bar spoon. Now obviously it's mainly used for bartending. The spiral spoon helps it to kind of roll along the inside edge of the glass a bit easier and it's easier to get a nice flow going, pulling it between your fingers to get a nice circular motion without adding texture. Now we're just gonna give this a little twist. Somehow I've managed to cut myself. It's okay. Just tuck that in there and here we have our steep on it with Georgian Big Whiskey. Cheers. Mm. Oh my goodness. That is delightful. The floral characteristic of the lavender comes through so nicely. You can still appreciate this fantastic small batch craft spirit. You get that nice lavender on the nose, in your nose, whatever works. But another type of bar spoon is called the Marzigan, which is named after, I believe, a city. And it was both styles of spoons were popularized in the mid 19th century. And the Marzigan spoon has a flat disc welded on the top instead of this fork. So now often bartenders will use the fork to grab garnishes, but your garnish may not look too pretty if you skewer it with a fork. So maybe less common than you might think. But the Marzigan spoon, the flat disc is used to muddle sugar cubes most often. That's about all you would muddle with it because it's a bit awkward to muddle with such a skinny shaft as opposed to a, a real muddler. But Marzigan, I think it was named after a victory that the French had in some city, not sure entirely. Um, but it was there's a popular style of coffee there that was served with beet sugar cubes. And so they would muddle with the flat disc of the spoon that beet sugar cube into their coffee. And that's how we have these two particular different styles of, of bar spoons. There's also a Japanese bar spoon that just has a kind of teardrop at the end. So it's the least functional in terms of the opposite end from the bowl of the spoon, but quite attractive and it's a bit weightier and often longer, which makes it a little bit easier to stir, especially if you're stirring two cocktails at once. I have not mastered that technique, but when I do, I'll be sure to show you. At any rate, thank you for joining me. If you haven't done so already, head to shop.tasteandtipple.ca, download your free Fresh From The Garden cocktail book, 
and join me for the remainder of our vegetal, herbal, floral cocktails that we have coming up. Thanks so much, guys. See you on Tuesday.